Well, hello there. Welcome back. I'm going to be doing three things today. I'm not only going to be doing an October wrap-up, I am also going to be doing a November TBR slash Tome Topple TBR. We're going to see how that goes, but first we're going to go with what I actually read throughout the month of October. This was the month where I was still pretty ill. I mostly just read graphic novels, but that still counts. But I'm going to first start off with the books that are actually novel form that I read this month. So the first one I'm going to mention, I don't actually physically have a copy of, but I mentioned it in my Stranger Things tag, and that is Bloody Jack by L.A. Meyer, I believe. And if you want more of my thoughts about what that story's about, you can just go watch that video. I'll try and link it down below. Um, but beyond that, everything else I actually physically have here, so let's just get started on that. First book I finished in the month of October would be Air of Fire by Sarah J. Mass. That is going to be book three in the Throne of Glass series. Obviously, since it's book three, I can't say what happens in this book. Um, but as far as basic concept from the first book, you're following Selena Sardothian, who is the main character you see here, and she is this top assassin in this fantasy kingdom called Adarlan. Adarlan? I'm not 100% sure how to pronounce it. But um, things have happened, and she has wound up in this salt mine concentration camp slash slave camp type situation and she's approached by the crown prince of this kingdom and offering her to compete in his father's competition to become the king's champion or just the king's assassin in exchange for service and then freedom so she decides to take him up on that it does follow the competition as well as some strange things that are happening in the castle it is a fantasy novel an adventure novel i have enjoyed the series so far um one thing I will say though about the first book is the first few chapters it did take me a little bit to get into the story just because even though she's in this setting where she's essentially a slave she's talking about how you know she can just kill anyone with the flick of her hand and how she's like this beautiful person even though she's covered in filth and I feel that if we'd been given more of a timeline as to how long she'd been there I could see why she was saying she could do these things but not actually acting on it with the way they're portraying her, it sounded like she hadn't been there that long, at least to me. So it felt just a little unrealistic that you're saying you can kill all these people and get out with no effort, but you're still here. What's the point? So that was a, kind of a first book error, I felt. But beyond that, I did enjoy the story. I am continuing this series. My friends from BookCon are still monitoring <laughs> my progress. But overall, did enjoy this book. For the second book... I read in the month of October that would be Down Amongst the Sticks and Bones by Shannon McGuire, Sheenan McGuire. Again, one of those names that could be pronounced multiple ways, but this is a prequel novel. Um, it's, it's weird. This was published after Every Heart a Doorway, which is considered book one in the Wayward Children series. This is a prequel. This does happen before the events of Every Heart a Doorway. So I don't really know how much spoilery you would feel about it. I feel I didn't get too many spoilers, but just in case, I'll just not go into too much detail. But as far as the first book, the way I kind of just summarize it without trying to give too many plot points is think about what would have happened if Alice came back from Wonderland, Coraline came back from her whole situation with the other mother and the other world, and the Pevensey children came back from Narnia and no one believed them, and they're... And their families assumed they were nuts or insane or had some kind of kidnapping trauma. That's what Every Hard Doorway essentially is covering. It's following these different characters that were in this magical world, brought back, they no longer fit in, and they desperately want to go back. Okay, maybe not in the case of Coraline, but overall they want to go back into their worlds. And it becomes a mystery novel. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It's a really quick read. This is also a quick read. This is following two characters, and this is their a story of before they went to the world, what happened during, and then what happened that made them leave. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. I'd highly recommend the series. I believe the third book is actually going to be a direct sequel, and it's coming out in January. I believe it's called like Underneath the Sugar Sky or something like that. I'm looking forward to that book, but thoroughly enjoyed this one as well. Next book I read in the month of October is going to be The Enchanted by Rene Denfeld. And this 
I think falls under the magical realism genre. It's a book where I feel if I give too many details, it kind of tells you too much about the story. So I'm just going to read kind of like the tagline of it because I feel that was what drew me into it. And essentially it goes like this. The Lady, an investigator who excelled at uncovering information to save her clients from execution. The Fallen Priest, beaten down by his guilt over a terrible sin and its tragic consequences. The Warden, a kind man within a cruel system. The Mute Prisoner, sensing what others cannot and what he calls this enchanted place. This does revolve primarily around a prison, and I feel the main characters that you see from are the Lady and this Mute Prisoner. It's a very interesting read. It is very dark. I may have enjoyed this more if I was more in the mood for something along those lines. I was looking for a quick read. I didn't expect it to be that heavy. Um, this is an adult novel, so I would not recommend it for younger readers since it is taking place in a prison and it's generally a, not a place, nice place to be. It does concentrate around Death Row specifically. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was a weird book, I would say. If you have access to it, read it. I wouldn't know about buying full price for it. I did get this through Book Outlet, but I did enjoy it overall. Now we're going to start the arc of graphic novels. I'm not going to go in order that I read them because I kind of jumped back and forth, but the next thing I read was a graphic novel and that would be Monstrous Volume 2 by, written by Marjorie Liu and illustrated by Sana Takeda. I have enjoyed the series. What did draw me initially to Volume 1 when I saw it in stores was the artwork. I will wholeheartedly admit that. I am a bit of a sucker for that when it comes to graphic novels. I felt this kind of had almost like a Final Fantasy art book kind of vibe. And it is a very dark series. Again, sequel, can't go into too much detail, but you're mostly following a character named Micah Halfwolf in this dystopian post-apocalyptic world that looks a lot like feudal Japan or Europe. Um, you're following the society where this battles between essentially regular humans and arcanics, which are half deity type creatures or kind of like demigods without powers. So you have people who are like half fox, like this character here. You have people like Micah Halfwolf. And you're following this political and historical dynamic. It is still a war torn country. And there's this being that is starting to take over. Micah Halfwell, so she's trying to figure out who this is, how this came to be, and the connection to her mother. And we're still following her adventures in book two. I desperately want to get book three. I don't know when it's going to be coming out. If you're looking for a new darker fantasy or post apocalyptic series, I would highly recommend this. It has been a very good ride. Okay. <laughs> now here comes the rest of the bulk of what I read during October. This is probably the most manga I've read consecutively in a very, very long time. And this is going to be weird to pick up, but we're going to try. That is volumes 24 through 38 of Naruto. If you do not know, ooh, this is awkward to hold one hand. If you don't know about Naruto, this is essentially a ninja coming of age story this came out around the same time as Bleach, and it's a very popular anime and manga. I had never gotten into it. I've yet to watch the anime. I probably won't just because I've heard it's filler central. But basic concept of the story you're following Naruto Uzumaki, who wants to become Hokage, which is essentially like the chief of this ninja village, and his adventures to try and become Hokage, and you're following his peers and their training. I will say this, the first, I'd say, 15 volumes were a little bit painful for me to get through, just because Naruto did annoy me. <laughs> but I was told in advance to try and push through till I get to ship it in, which is these black volumes, and they're right. I did enjoy much more. You are starting to get more serious conversations. You're starting to get more of the political intrigue that's happening between the different villages and this ninja community and ninja continent, as well as... You're getting to follow different characters. It's not solely Naruto's story anymore. You're starting to get more of their growth and their development, which I thoroughly enjoyed. But even though I'm at 38 volumes, I am barely halfway through. I think there's like 72 volumes. I am borrowing these from a friend. I don't think she, even she has a whole series, but I should be able to get into the 50s, maybe 60s. Wish me luck on that. <laughs> 
All right, moving on to just generic November TBR. I am currently reading The Assassin's Blade by Sarah J. Maas. This is a novella compilation? Yes, novella. I wasn't sure if it was short stories or novellas. Um, following Selena Sardothian before the events in book one, I have just finished the second story. I believe there's five in here. I am enjoying it. I like to see a bit more of like the training and what she was like before the events of Throne of Glass and I will admit I was most curious about who the hell is Sam <laughs> you keep hearing about in this series and you just never got a full explanation of him as a character. I'm starting to get a view of it here. I don't know how much we're gonna get. I don't know if later on in the series we get more information but definitely an interesting read so far. Now, in my quest to read the Naruto series, I don't know if I'm necessarily going to read these this month. This is kind of like a... I usually try and read a couple of them between books just to give myself a little push. But I'm looking to possibly read volume... Ooh, glare. 39, 40, and possibly 41 in the month of November. We'll see how that goes because now we're going to go to the Tome Topple. And we'll go into why I don't know if I'll get to these in just a second. Alright, so the Tome Topple Readathon, I believe this is round five. It is going to be November 17th through the 30th, midnight to midnight. I don't know if I'm going to be able to read every day of this since I do have Thanksgiving off. But I don't know if I'm going to have Black Friday off, which would be my prime reading day. Slash over the weekends, getting ready for the holidays and decorating and all that jazz, but we'll see how that goes. For the readathon, it does take place over two weeks. You do essentially have five challenges. I'm doubling up on some and I'll go over the challenges that I'm not going to participate in just in case it's something you're very interested in. But first I'm just going to go over what I plan to do. Basic overall rule is read more than one tome, which I think over two weeks should be feasible, especially since one of these is going to be a graphic novel. Now, with the graphic novels is the only exception to the rule where you can't have a bind-up or compilation, short stories. Only the graphic novels have this exception. So they do allow omnibuses, and I'm going to be rereading, because it's been years since I read it, the... and white covers don't want to cooperate. There we go. Uh, Chobits, I believe this is the first three volumes. It might be four. I don't know how many volumes it had. Consecutively, I know this is the first half of the series. I do not own volume two, which is why I want to reread this in an effort to get back into it, refresh my memory. I'm hoping maybe in the next month or so to get the second omnibus. We're following Hideki in this world where technology has advanced to the point where computers look like humans. Now, this was written before the age of smartphones, so there's still some flip phone action going on here, but instead of having a laptop or a desktop PC, you have these humanoid looking characters. I don't remember if I saw any male persicoms, which is kind of like the term they have for these computers, but you can have anything from like a full-size human to a little bit of a chibi, kind of like a Funko Pop size, to be completely honest. I think I would want the Funko Pop size one. That's just me. But you're following Hideki, he's this poor college student, and he finds this Persicom in the trash. And they're insanely expensive. He doesn't see anything wrong with it, so he takes it home and uh, <laughs> turns it on. And all this Persicom can say is Chi. So he names her that, and he's just going through the whole figuring out where the heck is she from. And then there's a theory that she might be these urban legend Persicoms known as Chobits. I don't remember all the hijinks in this since it was been years since I read this, but I'm hoping to refresh my memory on it. This lovely little fat thing runs me 736 pages, so I think I'm good on the 500 page minimum requirement. If I did mention that earlier, there is a requirement of 500 pages. Next challenge is to read a book from a series, and since I am reading The Assassin's Blade prior to the readathon, assuming that I finish it, I'm going to go with Queen of Shadows by Sarah J. Maas. This is the fourth book in the series. I think there's just two more after this. I believe it's Final Empire or Empire Storms and then Tower of Dawn, which I just recently got at a book signing. So this book is running 645 pages. So far I'm going 
over the Call of Duty with the 500 page minimum requirement for Tome Topple. Um, this is one of those points where I could double up on challenges since at this point I could say I'm reading more than one tome and one does fill out the series requirement. However, if for whatever reason I do not finish the Assassin's Blade prior to Tome Topple, I do have a backup volume. And that is going to be A Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkness. This does also cover another one of the challenges, which is read an adult novel. Not referring to erotica, just a novel that's not aimed toward young adults. I did get this quite a while back from Half Price Books, and this is one of those series where I've been intrigued, but I have heard it does have a lot of romance, which is kind of a make it or break it for me kind of series, but it does have witches and vampires and demons and whatnot, so I think it would still be interesting if the romance is kept to a minimum or it's a slow burn nothing too crazy <laughs> type romance. We'll see how it goes. Um, and this would also fit for the read a book in a series. This is the first book in a trilogy. And this book would run me 579 pages. And that is going to be my TBR for November slash Tome Topple. There is another challenge which is Buddy Read a Tome. I've opted not to do this for this round at least. But if you have been interested in reading any of these books and you would like to tell me what you thought about them or you want to attempt a buddy read and we just kind of get in touch when we're done <laughs> reading the books I'd be open to that as well so yes that is my wrap up TBR if you've read any of these books let me know what you thought about them and see you next time bye